here. I, I always have to explain my drawings. <laughs> Not an artist. So these are the hemispheres of the brain. These are the eyes. These are the ears. This is the smile, the little nose, the hands and the feet. Okay? And this happens, we're going to call this the right side of the brain. It's as I'm looking at you, and this is the left side. So if you could come here, I'm going to, again, muscle check you, but one of the things that I, I want you to do is set an intention to go back to nine weeks in utero. And it's not difficult, just set an intention, or it could be just a basal, thinking basal. Uh, when you went into the moral reflex and you started developing these leaf functions. So just imagining that I'm there at that time. That's it. All right. So, uh, first of all, I'm going to ask, is it okay? All right. Mm -hmm. So it's okay for me to do a dominance profiling. So now, just hold your arm up. Okay. And hold this arm up. Oh. So this arm is one that you've been using most. Right. I'm right-handed. You're right-handed. So I'm just going to color that in. Okay. okay. Now, I'm going to keep using this because it is your dominant arm. I want you to bring attention to your ear. Okay. Just bring attention to your earlobe and hold. And then the other ear and hold. Okay. And as you can see, it's real easy to find these. Okay. The arm, when you bring attention to that uh, sense, your, your body kind of wakes up. Yeah, this is the sense I've been using most of my life. Now I need to be listening. So now let's do it for your eyes. So you just hold the corner of your eye and look out there, and hold, okay, and then the other eye, hold, okay. So this is also, this is your dominant eye. And then, let's check your leg. So touch that, the top of that leg, and hold, and the other leg, and hold, okay. Do that, and now, I'm going to have you touch the side of your head, hold, and the other side, hold. So, what I'm finding is that you are right brain dominant. So what does that mean? Okay, what's interesting is that this hemisphere controls and brings in the senses from the opposite side of your body. There's a crossover that occurs in the spinal cord. So that uh, when you're under stress, you remember what I was saying about the non-dominant brain shutting down by 75 to 85 percent? This brain is, becomes kind of non-functional, and the only part of your brain that will be functional is here for re reflexing to protect you. So, when you're under stress, you will see, because the eye is opposite the dominant brain, you will hear, you'll be able to hear and see. What's interesting about it is this right hemisphere, we know, responds a little differently than the left hemisphere. The right hemisphere is what we call the gestalt hemisphere. And it tends to take in the whole picture and understand the whole first. And so what you're going to be looking for is the, the big picture. And you're going to be listening for the story, the metaphor, the emotion, because this side of the brain is more emotion bound than the other side. It's more connected to the amygdala, which has to do with emotions. Okay. The other thing that's going to happen is that you're going to need to move when you're under stress because this foot is opposite there, and that has to do with a lot of movement. But when you're under stress, you are not going to. Or if you do, it's going to be circular. It won't make any linear sense. You've noticed that probably. <laughs> yeah. And it's, you know, you, later you'll know exactly what you should have said. But at the moment, the words just escape you. And there's a reason for this, okay? What we know now is when we do PET scans, positron emission tomography scans, mm -hmm. when we're speaking, there are two areas of the brain that are lit up. The primary area that's really lit up has to do with the hand when we map 
the motor and sensory cortex. It has to do with the hand area. And we're seeing this more and more. That people, when they're languaging, they, there's a lot of gesturing. And those gestures then translate eventually into words in speaking. And we know that the left hemisphere is the language center. When people have strokes in the left hemisphere, they cannot talk. You know, they'll, it'll take a while for them to get the brain working again to come back to where they can vocalize. But Warnicke and Broca's area, special areas in the left hemisphere, have to do with languaging, speaking out. And the hand is opposite that, and this is the language hand. So when you're under stress, you're not going to talk. So it's a very interesting thing to look at. We can now look at this with regard to her learning. When she's in a learning situation, she is not going, if there's any stress in the learning situation, she's not going to be taking in the linear, logical functioning of what's going on. She's going to be looking for the big picture, okay? And she's going to need to move. Now, that in this day and age would put you in the category of special ed if you were in school because our schools right now are so designed very linearly developed and uh, so more left brain developed and so that would be diffi more difficult for you if the teacher in that classroom were just focusing on the linear aspects. Mm -hmm. So what's nice about seeing the dominance profiles is you realize even though you may have had difficulties in school, did you have any difficulties in school? Yes, I did. Yeah, because the school system is not designed necessarily for the right hemisphere. But somehow you've made it through, right? And right now we're looking at uh, seven boys for every girl in special ed. And when you start to do their dominance profiles, you see a lot of right brain and right hand dominance. And oftentimes, the whole right side is dominant. So they shut down when they're under stress. And these people, because they aren't fitting our school system, we then um, label them. And they are in, under more stress so that they stay in this kind of a profile. And, uh, some of our possibly greatest creative thinkers and so we need to be more aware of that. Um, so it's fun actually to notice um, if you look at this I would do an, if I had another profile and usually people it's interesting they will pick people in their lives that are opposite to them because they're so interesting until there's a conflict and then they're not so interesting. And so if so, you would pick somebody maybe that's a left brain dominant person that needs to talk. Mm. And really, when they're under stress, they need to really talk about it and figure it out through talking. And they're going to say, Breeze, talk to me about this. And you can't. And <laughs> so uh, there becomes misunderstandings. And it's interesting because we have our own profiles. We think the whole world sees the world the way we do, which is interesting. Uh, here's another example. Uh, if you have somebody that has a blocked ear, they may just talk and not hear you. And what we're finding is that in our classroom situation or in business situations, or really in all situa situations, about half of the people are blocked on their ears. They don't hear. Now, what is the main way that we teach or that we think we're getting information across? By talking. So we have some wonderful integrative ways of accessing, activating whole brain function and activating the various senses so that what we want, what we really want is for everything to be working so that you can take in the whole world. You can take in the big picture, you can take in all the linear, the detailed information, and you can explain it to others. 
and you can move in a very integrated way. So what we know is that when we are in survival, when we're in stress, that the non-dominant brain, the side of the brain, the non-dominant hemisphere will actually shut down by 75 to 85 percent. Now you can see that on these two PET scans. Here is a normal brain and you'll notice all the red frontal lobe, you've got a lot of red where we're able to put ideas together, we're being very creative, uh, we're doing executive functioning. Uh, you get a lot of an equal reds here in both sides of the brain that have to do, well, the sensory cortex and the temporal area that has to do with hearing. Back here is occipital, it has to do with seeing. And you'll notice that there's a lot. This is your brain on stress. And if you'll notice, or survival, that the non-dominant brain is shut way down. This person happens to be a right brain dominant person, and so only this side is functional. Notice that not much is happening in those frontal lobes. And you're just getting a little bit of activity that's assisting the person to either fight or flee. And so what we want is to live like this, where we're integrated, where everything's working. Well, this sounds wonderful. I'm excited to read the book. So in my book, it's delineated how to do the dominance profiles, and it goes over all the different dominance profiles and ways to help to integrate them. Well, thank you, Dr. Hannaford. Thank you for your